My name is Michael Palmgren. I'm the founder and manager of Marine Education Center here in Malmö in southern Sweden. Uh, I have been working with the ocean since uh, almost 35 years now and I was a part uh, with building the bridge. I was in an um, early warning system, looked at the uh, impact from, from uh, the building of the bridge. For over 20 years ago, my wife and I uh, started this marine education program here in Malmö. And now we are seven colleagues working here at the center and we focus on, on awareness and, and uh, ocean literacy. We have school classes from preschool up to students at the university. So it's quite broad um, spectra here. 2020 we became a national visitor center for, for the nature, Natura Maresund. And here is open for the public all year around and uh, we have guided tours for all the visitors. Roughly 35,000 visitors each year. And that combined with the 6,000 school children we have each year. I have been working with, uh, together with UNESCO a couple of times and uh, when I got uh, this opportunity to talk about a uh, nature-based solution and, and uh, for city planners and architects and landscape architects, I was on board directly. According to the latest UN report in December 2022, we have to step up for the nature-based solutions. Climate, biodiversity and land degradation goals will be out of reach unless investment in nature-based solutions rapidly ramp up to $384 billion dollar, uh, per year by 2025. UN also declared that 2050, 68% of the world's population will live in urban cities. Therefore, we must convert the cities to livable areas with blue and green areas, both on land and also in the sea. For that to happen, everyone that uh, construct and build cities need to be more aware of how to protect, conserve and restore coastal and marine ecosystems by using nature-based solutions. At many cities around the globe, we have reclaimed land from the ocean. And so is the case even here in Malmö. We have a lot of land reclaimed from the ocean. So if we look back on the maps 200 years ago, we can clearly see that this was a shallow area with eelgrass, bladder rack, mussels, fishes, a beautiful area. And now we have turned it to a deep basin for the ship and the ferries. But if we recreate this area up to four meters with reefs, we can recreate the formal basin to a vivid living marine area. For seven years ago, I got the opportunity to talk about marine environment in, uh, at a conference in, in Malmö. Uh, there was a conference and workshop for planning the new Nyhamnen, the new harbor area. A new city part for 15,000 inhabitants. Uh, at the conference there were students, there were city planners, there were architects, the landscape architects. And this was a, a quite exciting um, uh, way to work with so different uh, groups. And the outcome was fantastic, but we forgot something. What about the basin? The deep basin, the formal port for the ferries, seven, eight meter with no marine life. Can we convert it? Can we transform it? Can we recreate this area to a vivid place for snorkeling, for swimming, for sea activities in the city. We have already started this recreation process in another basin, South Wharf Basin. This is a full-scale pilot, 52,000 square meters with basin and 
roughly 160,000 cubic meter of clay will be the foundation for, for, for the new area. So on top, from 7 to 11 meters depth, we will create a new foundation for eelgrass to grow and reefs for mussels and algae and fishes. The wharf city where 8,000 new inhabitants uh, will live will be a beautiful area for swimming, for snorkeling or for stand-up paddleboard or different water activities. When we started this work in the South Wharf Basin, we gathered all uh, the city planners and, and uh, the architects and the uh, workers and constructors and educate them about the ocean literacy and the importance of, of the work, what we're doing here. We recreate a formal uh, uh, shallow area. And if they know the importance of their marine life, they do a better job. And this will be uh, eye-opening for, for all the workers here. They, they do something for the future, not just a building, something that will grow and stay and be a really important part of uh, our transformation to a better city. How can the city build for the coming climate change for the next 200 years? with future water level rises and storm surges. The city invited a couple of architectural offices uh, to give suggestions how to work with climate protection over time. White architects gather a group of experts and we work closely with a focus on highlighting nature-based solutions, such as recreated basin areas in the harbour, open storm water system and over flooding landscape instead of hard protection solution. This collaboration with city planners and landscape architects and architects was a new way to work. But talking about ocean literacy and nature-based solution, I must mention our collaboration with students from the different uh, university in this area. The students will be the next generation of city planners and landscape architects and architects. The shallow areas with seagrass and mangroves are super important for the planet. It covers only 0.1% of the total ocean. It could withhold 20% of the carbon dioxide uptake in the whole ocean. Working with nature-based solution is the only path for the future. Creating wetlands, underwater reefs, protecting shallow marine areas and increasing the blue and green biodiversity in the city and in the ocean are necessary. We must start now. And maybe it's time to change our perspective on what is a sustainable ocean. We can't continue living from the ocean. We need to change to living with or even living as the ocean, human and non-human.